Hello and welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! Engineering, where, like one of my acquaintances said in a video, I look at various engines and how they can be used in a variety of decks. Thanks, Golden Nova. With that, let's talk about today's engine, Jinzo. One of the most infamous monsters of the early Yu-Gi-Oh!, an era in which traps were actually relevant, we are seeing competitive play from time to time as a side deck option. First introduced in Feral Servants all the way back in October 2002, the fact that it's somewhat relevant to this day just speaks of its power. The first iteration of the engine came after the release of Light of Destruction back in May 2008. It saw competitive play at least twice in the machine deck from 2008 and the gadget build from 2010, while the engine's second build, the lesser known one, became playable in September 2020 with the release of legendary duelist Rage of Ra. That variant hasn't seen any competitive success as of yet, but it might in the future. The idea behind both iterations of the engine is to establish Jinzo on the board and with it cut the opponent from using trap cards, basically getting immunity from power cards like evenly matched negation from cards like infant impermanence or disruption from any counter traps. However, the route they take to achieve that goal is different. Let's first analyze the core cards from the older iteration of the Jinzo engine. For obvious reasons, I won't be looking into Jinzo because its effect is so simple and well known, I find it wasteful to talk about it. And yes, me talking about the reasons not to talk about Jinzo is taking much more time than if I just talked about Jinzo. This little guy can revive a Jinzo from the graveyard when it's sent to the graveyard. The best part of this is the lack of specified place it has to be sent from, meaning that sending it from the deck works, however, the warning on the cards was holding it back. Since it's a when you can effect, it will miss timing when turn is sent to the grave at this cost, greatly impacting any sort of versatility this engine can provide. This spell is a part of the new engine, and it allows the opponent an option of setting a trap directly from the deck. If they take on that offer, a Jinzo is then summoned from the owner's deck. Otherwise, it's a glorified Rota. The thing about this engine, for the most part, is that it mostly runs on the psychological aspect of the game, instead of a technical play or game mechanic. It's kind of abusing the fact that Yu-Gi-Oh! players don't read cards, which allows the owner to summon a 2400 attack meter for free. Unfortunately, it's a magic trick which you're explaining to your opponent while you're doing it. So it's a one-time use and done. Unless the opponent is an idiot. Both variants of the engine are on the smaller spectrum, with the returner one being between 4 and 6 cards, basically using as many returners as Jinzo's. This is due to the fact that returner's effect isn't a once per turn and it can activate as many times as possible and can revive as many Jinzo's as possible it can. The situation with the Law of the Cosmos engine is a bit different. Since this card can fetch a monster from the deck, the engine looks like most of the engines of that kind, with three cast spell cards and a single target. Nothing more to add here. Jinzo itself is a great plus of this engine, a moderately powered monster that shuts down one type of cards in the game is extremely powerful, and when it's not working as a floodgate, it's some sort of an extender. The thing is, each variant has their own cons. When it comes to the returner engines, the biggest one is that the play is heavily telegraphed. Not to mention the returner can miss timing if used incorrectly. There's also the need to fine-tune the deck towards milling. When it comes to the Law of the Cosmos one, it doesn't have that sort of issues, it has a different one. Since the idea for this engine abuses the weakness of any Yu-Gi-Oh player, their inability to read cards, the cat is out of the bag once the engine is used. Like I mentioned previously, it's like a magician performing a magic trick and explaining it in detail at the same time. While the law engine is quite universal in its application, the returner one has to be delegated to a mill focused deck. However, a light swarm might not be the best idea since returner's effect can be triggered during the end phase and it will destroy the Jinzo during the same end phase. Jinzo had so many reprints over the years that it's basically worthless, at least in the card value department. The cheapest version you can get is from Legendary Decks 2, costing a dollar and a half 
half an average law of the cosmos had only one printing and that's an expense of $2.87, while Ritana's cheapest print is from legendary duelist Rage of Ra for one buck per cup. That will be it for today, I hope your psychic powers have been unleashed and the opponent is completely incarcerated. With that I'll bid you all farewell, Jokolos hang out, peace!